Here are 50 most commonly asked scenario-based interview questions and answers for a role in vulnerability management. 1. Scenario. A recent vulnerability scan reveals a critical vulnerability in your web server. How do you prioritize and address it? Answer. I would start by assessing the vulnerabilities, severity, exploitability, and impact on the business. This involves reviewing CVS scores, vendor advisories, and potential exploitation methods. I would prioritize patching based on the criticality of the affected system and its exposure to the internet. I would then coordinate with the IT team to schedule the patch deployment, ensuring minimal disruption to operations. Finally, I would validate the patch's effectiveness through post-deployment testing and continuous monitoring. 2. Scenario a zero-day vulnerability has been discovered in a widely used application within your organization. How do you respond? Answer. First, I would review the details of the zero-day vulnerability and understand its potential impact. I would identify all instances of the vulnerable application within the organization and assess the risk based on their criticality and exposure. Immediate mitigation steps might include disabling certain features, implementing temporary access controls, or applying virtual patches using a web application firewall. I would stay in close contact with the vendor for updates on a permanent fix, and communicate with stakeholders about the risk and mitigation steps taken. 3. Scenario. During a routine scan, a significant number of low-severity vulnerabilities are identified. How do you handle these findings? Answer. While low-severity vulnerabilities may not pose an immediate threat, they can still be exploited in conjunction with other vulnerabilities. I would categorize these vulnerabilities based on potential impact and exploitability. I'd work with the IT team to schedule regular updates and patches to address these issues over time. Additionally, I would implement compensating controls such as network segmentation and enhanced monitoring to mitigate the risk posed by these vulnerabilities until they are fully remediated. 4. Scenario. You discover a critical vulnerability in a third-party application that the vendor has not yet patched. What steps do you take? Answer. First, I would evaluate the vulnerability's impact on our environment by assessing where and how the application is used. I would implement immediate compensating controls, such as network segmentation, access restrictions, or disabling affected features to minimize the risk. I would also closely monitor the affected systems for signs of exploitation. Additionally, I would maintain regular communication with the vendor for updates on a patch and ensure that relevant stakeholders within the organization are informed about the risk and mitigation measures in place. 5. Scenario a compliance audit reveals that several critical patches were not applied within the required time frame. How do you address this issue? Answer. I would conduct a root cause analysis to determine why the patches were not applied on time. This might involve reviewing patch management processes, resource constraints, or communication gaps. I would then implement corrective actions such as improving patch management procedures ensuring timely notifications, and automating patch deployment where possible. Additionally, I would work on enhancing compliance tracking and reporting to prevent future lapses and ensure alignment with regulatory requirements. 6. Scenario. After deploying a patch, you notice unusual system behavior. How do you handle this situation? Answer. First. I would isolate the affected systems to prevent potential widespread impact. Then, I would analyze the unusual behavior to determine if it's directly related to the patch. This involves reviewing system logs, conducting regression testing, and consulting vendor documentation. If the patch is determined to be the cause, I would roll back the patch and work with the vendor to resolve the issue. Simultaneously, I would implement compensating controls to mitigate the vulnerability until a stable patch can be deployed. 7. Scenario. A high-profile vulnerability like Heartbleed is discovered in your infrastructure. How do you prioritize and manage the remediation? 
Answer. I would start by identifying all systems affected by the high-profile vulnerability. I would prioritize remediation based on system criticality, exposure, and potential impact. Immediate actions would include applying patches, updating configurations, and implementing compensating controls like enhanced monitoring or network isolation. I would also communicate with stakeholders about the vulnerability, the risks involved, and the steps being taken to mitigate it. Finally, I would conduct thorough testing to ensure that the remediation efforts are effective and that no systems are missed. 8. Scenario. The vulnerability management team discovers that an essential application has a vulnerability with no available patch. What is your approach? Answer. Initially, I would assess the risk posed by the vulnerability by considering the application's criticality and exposure. I would then implement temporary mitigation measures such as limiting access, disabling vulnerable features, or using a web application firewall to block exploit attempts. Additionally, I would continuously monitor the application for any signs of exploitation. I would maintain open communication with the vendor for updates on a patch and inform relevant stakeholders about the vulnerability and the steps taken to mitigate the risk. 9. Scenario New vulnerability scanning tool is being implemented. How do you ensure a smooth transition from the old tool to the new one? Answer. I would start by thoroughly evaluating the new tools, capabilities, and compatibility with our existing infrastructure. I'd then develop a detailed transition plan that includes training for the vulnerability management team, configuring the new tool and running parallel scans with both the old and new tools to validate results. I would also ensure that all stakeholders are informed about the transition and any changes in reporting formats or processes. Finally, I would decommission the old tool once the new one is fully operational and validated. 10. Scenario. The CISO requests a comprehensive report on the organization's vulnerability posture. How do you compile and present this information? Answer. I would compile data from vulnerability scans, incident reports, and remediation efforts to provide a comprehensive overview. This would include metrics such as the number of vulnerabilities by severity, time to remediation, and compliance with patch management policies. I would use visual aids like charts and graphs to highlight key trends and areas of concern. Additionally, I would include an executive summary to provide context and actionable insights for the CISA. Regular updates and continuous monitoring would be emphasized to maintain an up-to-date vulnerability posture. 11. Scenario. A vulnerability in a critical system needs to be patched, but the system cannot be taken offline during business hours. How do you proceed? Answer. I would coordinate with relevant stakeholders to schedule a maintenance window during off-peak hours to apply the patch. If taking the system offline is not feasible even during off-hours, I would explore alternative remediation methods such as hotfixes or rolling updates that can be applied without downtime. Additionally, I would implement compensating controls like enhanced monitoring and access restrictions to mitigate the risk until the patch can be applied. Clear communication with stakeholders is crucial to ensure minimal disruption to business operations. 12. Scenario. A vulnerability scan reveals a high number of false positives, leading to unnecessary remediation efforts. How do you address this issue? Answer. I would review and refine the scanning tool's configuration to reduce false positives, ensuring that it accurately identifies genuine vulnerabilities. This might involve updating signatures, adjusting sensitivity settings, or incorporating context-aware scanning techniques. Additionally, I would implement a validation process where identified vulnerabilities are cross checked against multiple sources or manually verified before remediation efforts are initiated. Continuous feedback and tuning of the scanning tool would help maintain accuracy and efficiency in vulnerability management. 13. Scenario. A business unit resists applying necessary security patches due to concerns about application compatibility. 
How do you handle this situation? Answer, I would start by engaging with the business unit to understand their concerns and the potential impact of the patches on application compatibility. I would propose a phased approach, starting with testing the patches in a controlled environment to validate compatibility. If issues are identified, I would work with the business unit and vendors to find solutions or workarounds. Clear communication about the risks of not applying the patches and potential mitigation strategies is essential to gain buy-in from the business unit. 14. Scenario. After deploying a new vulnerability scanning tool, it detects thousands of vulnerabilities. How do you prioritize remediation efforts? Answer. First, I would categorize the vulnerabilities based on their severity, exploitability, and potential impact on business operations. I would use CVS scores as a guide to identify critical and high severity vulnerabilities that need immediate attention. I would prioritize remediation efforts for systems that are externally facing or handle sensitive data. Additionally, I would focus on vulnerabilities that have known exploits available in the wild. Coordination with relevant teams to address these vulnerabilities in a phased manner. Ensuring minimal disruption to business processes is crucial. 15. Scenario You find that a recently patched system is still vulnerable. According to a follow-up scan, what steps do you take? Answer. I would first verify that the patch was applied correctly and completely by checking system logs and patch management tools. If the patch was applied correctly, I would investigate if there are additional steps required, such as configuration changes or updates to dependent systems. I would also consider the possibility of a false positive from the scanning tool and validate the vulnerability manually or with an alternative tool. If the vulnerability persists, I would escalate the issue to the vendor for further assistance and continue monitoring the system closely. 16. Scenario. The organization is preparing for a significant software upgrade. How do you ensure the upgrade does not introduce new vulnerabilities? Answer. I would start by conducting a comprehensive risk assessment of the new software to identify potential vulnerabilities. This includes reviewing vendor documentation, known vulnerabilities, and conducting a thorough vulnerability scan in a testing environment. I would work closely with the software vendors and development teams to apply any necessary patches and ensure secure configurations before deployment. Additionally, I would plan for post-upgrade vulnerability scans and continuous monitoring to detect and address any new vulnerabilities that may arise. 17. Scenario. A remote code execution vulnerability is discovered in a widely used application within the organization. What immediate actions do you take? Answer. I would immediately assess the exposure of the affected application. Prioritizing systems that are externally accessible or handle sensitive data, I would apply available patches or hotfixes from the vendor as soon as possible. If no patch is available, I would implement temporary mitigation measures, such as disabling the vulnerable functionality, applying network-level protections, or restricting access. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and mitigation steps is critical. Continuous monitoring for any signs of exploitation would also be necessary until a permanent fix is deployed. 18. Scenario. An internal application was developed without following secure coding practices and now has multiple vulnerabilities. How do you address this issue? Answer. I would conduct a thorough code review and vulnerability assessment to identify all security flaws in the application. I would work with the development team to prioritize and remediate the vulnerabilities based on their severity and potential impact. Implementing secure coding standards and best practices is essential to prevent future vulnerabilities. Additionally, I would provide training for developers on secure coding techniques and establish a process for regular code reviews and security assessments throughout the development lifecycle. 19. Scenario. The organization has merged with another company, and you need to integrate their systems into your vulnerability management program. What steps do you take? Answer. 
I would start by conducting a comprehensive inventory of the merged company's IT assets and evaluating their current vulnerability management practices. I would perform vulnerability scans on the new systems to identify any existing vulnerabilities. I would integrate these systems into our existing vulnerability management program, ensuring that they follow the same standards and procedures. Coordination with the IT and security teams from both organizations is crucial to align processes and ensure a smooth transition. Continuous monitoring and regular assessments would be necessary to maintain a secure posture. 20. Scenario, you identify a critical vulnerability that cannot be patched due to business constraints. What alternative measures do you implement? Answer. I would implement compensating controls to mitigate the risk posed by the unpatched vulnerability. This could include network segmentation to isolate the vulnerable system, applying strict access controls, enhancing monitoring for suspicious activity, and deploying intrusion prevention systems IPS to detect and block potential exploits. I would also ensure that the vulnerability is documented and stakeholders are aware of the risk and mitigation measures in place. Regular reviews and updates to the compensating controls would be necessary to ensure ongoing protection. 21. Scenario. A new regulation requires the organization to adhere to stricter vulnerability management standards. How do you ensure compliance? Answer. I would start by thoroughly understanding the new regulation and its requirements. I would conduct a gap analysis to compare our current vulnerability management practices with the regulatory standards. I would develop a compliance plan to address any gaps, which might include updating policies and procedures, implementing additional security controls, and enhancing reporting and documentation, training for the security team and relevant stakeholders on the new requirements is essential. Regular audits and continuous monitoring would ensure ongoing compliance with the regulation. 22. Scenario. During a penetration test, the testers exploit a known vulnerability that had been deemed low risk. How do you reassess your vulnerability? Prioritization strategy? Answer. I would review the context in which the vulnerability was exploited during the penetration test to understand its impact and potential for real-world exploitation. I would reassess the vulnerability prioritization criteria to consider factors beyond just CVS scores, such as the environment in which the vulnerability exists, its potential to be combined with other vulnerabilities, and the value of the assets at risk. I would update the vulnerability management process to ensure a more comprehensive risk assessment and prioritization approach, including regular reviews and adjustments based on emerging threats and lessons learned. 23. Scenario. A vulnerability in a third-party library used by multiple applications in your organization is discovered. What steps do you take? Answer. I would identify all applications and systems that rely on the vulnerable third-party library. I would assess the impact of the vulnerability on each application and prioritize remediation based on criticality and exposure. Coordinating with the development teams, I would work to update or replace the library with a secure version. If an immediate update isn't feasible, I would implement compensating controls such as input validation access restrictions, or runtime monitoring to mitigate the risk. Continuous monitoring and regular updates would ensure that all instances of the library remain secure. 24. Scenario. An executive requests an overview of the organization's vulnerability management effectiveness. What metrics and information do you provide? Answer. I would provide key metrics such as the number of vulnerabilities identified, categorized by severity, the average time to remediate vulnerabilities, compliance with patch management, SLS, and trends over time. Additionally, I would include information on the effectiveness of compensating controls, results of recent vulnerability scans and penetration tests, and any incidents of exploitation. Visual aids like charts and graphs can help convey this information clearly. 
an executive summary highlighting key findings, risks, and improvement initiatives, would provide a comprehensive overview of the vulnerability management program's effectiveness. 25. Scenario, business critical system cannot be taken offline for vulnerability scanning. How do you ensure its security? Answer, I would implement alternative methods to assess the system's security without taking it offline. This could include passive network monitoring, log analysis, and reviewing configuration and patch levels manually. I would also implement compensating controls such as network segmentation, strict access controls, and continuous monitoring for any signs of suspicious activity. Coordination with the system stakeholders is crucial to ensure that security measures do not disrupt business operations. Regular reviews and updates to these controls would be necessary to maintain security. 26. Scenario. A critical vulnerability is discovered just before a major product launch. How do you handle this situation? Answer. I would quickly assess the impact of the vulnerability on the product and prioritize its remediation. If possible, I would work with the development team to apply a fix or patch before the launch. If a fix cannot be implemented in time, I would consider delaying the launch if the risk is too high. Alternatively, I would implement temporary mitigations such as disabling the vulnerable functionality, applying compensating controls, or enhancing monitoring for any signs of exploitation. Clear communication with stakeholders about the risk and mitigation measures is essential to make an informed decision. 27. Scenario, an audit reveals that some systems have not been scanned for vulnerabilities in several months. How do you address this issue? Answer, I would conduct an immediate vulnerability scan on the unscanned systems to identify any existing vulnerabilities. I would review and update the vulnerability management process to ensure that all systems are regularly scanned according to a defined schedule. This might involve automating scans, improving asset inventory management, and ensuring that all systems are included in the scanning scope. Training and awareness for the relevant teams on the importance of regular scans and adherence to the updated process would help prevent future lapses. 28. Scenario A new business unit is established, and you need to integrate their IT assets into your vulnerability management program. What steps do you take? Answer. I would start by conducting a comprehensive inventory of the new business unit's IT assets. I would perform initial vulnerability scans on these assets to identify any existing vulnerabilities. I would integrate these assets into the organization's existing vulnerability management program, ensuring they follow the same standards and procedures. Coordination with the business unit's IT and security teams is crucial to align processes and ensure a smooth integration. Continuous monitoring and regular assessments would help maintain a secure posture for the new business unit. 29. Scenario, you discover that a previously patched vulnerability has reappeared in the environment. How do you investigate and resolve this issue? Answer. I would investigate to determine if the patch was removed or if a configuration change caused the vulnerability to reappear. This involves reviewing patch management logs, system configurations, and any recent changes or updates. If the patch was removed, I would reapply it and implement measures to prevent unauthorized changes, such as improved change management processes and access controls. If the reappearance is due to a configuration change, it would correct the configuration and enhance monitoring to detect similar issues in the future. Communication with relevant teams is essential to understand the root cause and prevent recurrence. 30. Scenario, a critical infrastructure component is found to have multiple vulnerabilities. How do you ensure its security while maintaining operational continuity? Answer. I would prioritize the vulnerabilities based on their severity, exploitability, and potential impact on the infrastructure component. Immediate actions might include applying patches during scheduled maintenance windows, implementing compensating controls such as network segmentation, 
access restrictions, and enhanced monitoring. I would work closely with the infrastructure team to develop a remediation plan that ensures minimal disruption to operations. Continuous communication with stakeholders is crucial to balance security and operational needs. Regular reviews and updates to the security measures would help maintain a secure and resilient infrastructure. 31. Scenario. The organization is expanding its use of cloud services. How do you ensure vulnerability management is effectively extended to the cloud environment? Answer. I would start by understanding the shared responsibility model for the specific cloud services being used and identifying the security responsibilities of the cloud provider versus the organization. I would implement cloud native vulnerability scanning and management tools to continuously assess the cloud environment. Ensuring secure configurations, regular patching, and applying security best practices for cloud services is crucial. Additionally, I would provide training for the security team on cloud-specific vulnerabilities and mitigation strategies. Continuous monitoring and regular audits would ensure that the cloud environment remains secure. 32. Scenario Vendor notifies you of a new critical vulnerability in a product you use. What is your response plan? Answer. I would immediately assess the impact of the vulnerability on our environment by identifying all instances of the affected product. I would prioritize remediation based on the criticality of the systems involved and their exposure. Coordinating with the vendor, I would apply patches or recommended fixes as soon as possible. If a patch isn't available, I would implement temporary mitigation measures such as disabling affected features, applying network level protections, or restricting access. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and mitigation steps is essential. Continuous monitoring for any signs of exploitation would also be necessary. 33. Scenario. An external partner requires integration with your network, which might introduce new vulnerabilities. How do you mitigate this risk? Answer. I would conduct a thorough security assessment of the external partner systems and practices to identify any potential vulnerabilities. I would implement strict access controls, ensuring that the partner only has access to necessary resources. Network segmentation and the use of secure communication channels, for example, VPNs, would help minimize the risk. Regular vulnerability scans and continuous monitoring of the integrated systems would be necessary to detect and address any issues promptly. Clear communication and security requirements with the partner are essential to maintain a secure integration. 34. Scenario. A recently deployed application is found to have security flaws during a post-deployment vulnerability scan. How do you address this? Answer. I would immediately prioritize and assess the identified security flaws based on their severity and potential impact. I would work with the development team to address these flaws through patches, code fixes, or configuration changes. Implementing a Secure Development Lifecycle SDLC process, including security reviews and testing at each stage, is essential to prevent future security flaws. Additionally, I would ensure that post-deployment vulnerability scans are a regular practice to catch any issues that might have been missed during development. Communication with stakeholders about the findings and remediation efforts is crucial. 35. Scenario. The organization decides to adopt a new vulnerability management framework. How do you ensure a successful implementation? Answer. I would start by thoroughly understanding the new framework and its requirements. Conducting a gap analysis to compare current practices with the framework's requirements would help identify areas needing improvement. I would develop a detailed implementation plan that includes training for the security team, updating policies and procedures, and configuring tools to align with the new framework. Regular communication with stakeholders and management is crucial to gain support and ensure smooth adoption. Continuous monitoring, auditing, and refining the implementation based on feedback would ensure its effectiveness. 36. Scenario. 
An employee reports a security concern that could potentially be a vulnerability. How do you handle this report? Answer. I would acknowledge the report and thank the employee for their vigilance. I would investigate the concern by analyzing the reported issue and conducting a vulnerability assessment if necessary. If the concern is validated as a vulnerability, I'd prioritize and address it based on its severity and impact. Communication with the employee about the steps taken and the outcome of their report is important to encourage a culture of security awareness. Additionally, I would review and update the process for reporting and handling security concerns to ensure it's efficient and effective. 37. Scenario. A legacy system critical to operations is no longer receiving security updates from the vendor. How do you ensure its security? Answer. I would assess the risks associated with continuing to use the legacy system and identify potential vulnerabilities. Implementing compensating controls such as network segmentation, strict access controls, and enhanced monitoring would help mitigate these risks. I would explore options for virtual patching or applying third-party security solutions. Planning for the system's eventual replacement or upgrade is essential. Ensuring that a more secure and supported system is implemented in the future. Communication with stakeholders about the risks and mitigation measures is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 38. Scenario. The organization experiences a rapid expansion in IT assets. How do you scale the vulnerability management program to accommodate this growth? Answer. I would start by conducting a comprehensive inventory of the new IT assets to ensure they are included in the vulnerability management program. Implementing automated vulnerability scanning and management tools would help efficiently handle the increased scope. I would ensure that policies and procedures are updated to reflect the expanded environment. Regular training and awareness for the security team and relevant stakeholders are essential to maintain effectiveness. Continuous monitoring, Regular assessments and feedback loops would help scale the program sustainably while maintaining security posture. 39. Scenario. A critical vulnerability in an IoT device used across the organization is discovered. How do you address this issue? Answer. I would identify all instances of the vulnerable IoT device and assess the impact of the vulnerability. Coordinating with the vendor. I would apply available patches or recommended fixes as soon as possible. If a patch isn't available, I would implement temporary mitigation measures such as network segmentation, access restrictions, or disabling vulnerable functionalities. Continuous monitoring for any signs of exploitation is necessary until a permanent fix is deployed. Additionally, reviewing and updating IoT security policies and practices to prevent similar issues in the future is essential. 40. Scenario. An acquired company has different vulnerability management practices. How do you integrate their systems into your program? Answer. I would start by conducting a comprehensive assessment of the acquired company's vulnerability management practices and IT assets. Identifying gaps and areas for alignment with our organization's program is essential. I would develop an integration plan that includes updating policies and procedures, training for the acquired company's security team, and configuring tools to ensure consistency. Regular communication with stakeholders from both organizations is crucial to ensure a smooth integration. Continuous monitoring and periodic reviews would help maintain alignment and effectiveness. 41. Scenario. A major vulnerability in the operating system used by most of your servers is discovered. How do you manage the remediation process? Answer. I would prioritize the remediation based on the criticality of the affected servers and their exposure to threats. Coordinating with the IT and server management teams, I would schedule patch deployment, ensuring minimal disruption to business operations. If immediate patching isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigation measures, such as access restrictions, network segmentation, and enhanced monitoring. 
Communication with stakeholders about the risk and remediation plan is essential. Continuous monitoring and post-patch validation would ensure the effectiveness of the remediation process. 42. Scenario. The vulnerability management team is understaffed, leading to delays in remediation efforts. How do you address this issue? Answer. I would assess the current workload and identify bottlenecks in the remediation process. Implementing automation for routine tasks such as Vulnerability scanning, reporting, and patch management would help alleviate some of the workload. Prioritizing vulnerabilities based on their criticality and impact would ensure that the most significant threats are addressed first. I would also advocate for additional resources or temporary support to handle the backlog. Continuous training and process optimization would help improve efficiency and effectiveness in the long term. 43. Scenario. A critical vulnerability in a cloud service provider's infrastructure is disclosed. How do you ensure your organization's security? Answer. I would start by assessing the impact of the vulnerability on our cloud-based systems and data. Coordinating with the cloud service provider, I would apply available patches or recommended mitigations as soon as possible. Implementing additional security controls such as enhanced monitoring, access restrictions, and data encryption would help protect our assets. Continuous communication with the cloud provider for updates and monitoring for any signs of exploitation is crucial. Additionally, reviewing and updating our cloud security policies and practices would help maintain a secure posture. 44. Scenario a critical vulnerability requires an emergency patch deployment, but it's during peak business hours. How do you proceed? Answer. I would evaluate the risk of delaying the patch versus the potential disruption to business operations. If the risk is high, I would proceed with the emergency patch deployment. Ensuring clear communication with stakeholders about the potential impact. Implementing compensating controls such as enhanced monitoring and access restrictions could help mitigate the risk if immediate patching isn't feasible. Coordination with the IT and business teams to minimize disruption and ensure a smooth deployment is essential. Post-deployment validation and monitoring would ensure the patch's effectiveness. 45. Scenario the vulnerability management program lacks support from senior leadership, affecting its effectiveness. How do you gain their support? Answer, I would start by communicating the importance and impact of the vulnerability management program on the organization's overall security posture, presenting data on the number of vulnerabilities identified, Remediation efforts and potential risks and impacts of not addressing vulnerabilities can help make a compelling case. Highlighting success stories and industry best practices can also demonstrate the value of the program. Regular updates and reports to senior leadership, along with clear communication of needs and benefits, would help gain their support and ensure the program's effectiveness. 46. Scenario a vulnerability in a popular web application framework used by your organization is discovered. How do you handle this? Answer, I would identify all applications using the affected framework and assess the impact of the vulnerability. Coordinating with the development teams, I would apply patches or updates to the framework as soon as possible. If immediate patching isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigations such as web application, firewalls WAFs, input validation, and access restrictions. Continuous monitoring for any signs of exploitation is necessary until a permanent fix is deployed. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and remediation efforts is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 47. Scenario Security researcher reports a vulnerability in your public-facing application. How do you respond? Answer. I would acknowledge the report and thank the researcher for their contribution. I would verify the vulnerability by conducting an assessment and replicating the issue. Prioritizing the remediation based on the severity and impact of the vulnerability. I would work with the development team to apply a fix. 
Implementing a coordinated disclosure process with the researcher ensures responsible handling of the information. Clear communication with stakeholders about the findings and remediation efforts is essential. Additionally, reviewing and updating security practices to prevent similar issues in the future is important. 48. Scenario. A vulnerability in an unsupported legacy application is discovered. How do you address this? Answer. I would assess the risk and impact of the vulnerability on the organization. Implementing compensating controls such as network segmentation, strict access controls, and enhanced monitoring would help mitigate the risk. Planning for the application's replacement or upgrade to a supported version is essential for long-term security. Communication with stakeholders about the risks and mitigation measures is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Regular reviews and updates to the compensating controls would help maintain security until a permanent solution is implemented. 49. Scenario, you identify a pattern of recurring vulnerabilities in applications developed by the same team. How do you address this? Answer. I would conduct a root cause analysis to identify the underlying reasons for the recurring vulnerabilities. Implementing secure development practices, such as code reviews, security testing, and adherence to secure coding standards, is essential. Providing targeted training for the development team on secure coding techniques and common vulnerabilities would help improve their security awareness. Establishing a feedback loop to review and address security issues early in the development lifecycle can prevent future vulnerabilities. Continuous monitoring and regular assessments would ensure ongoing improvement. 50. Scenario. An organization-wide software update introduces new vulnerabilities. How do you manage this situation? Answer. I would immediately assess the impact of the new vulnerabilities and prioritize remediation based on their severity and potential impact. Coordinating with the software vendor, I would apply available patches or recommended fixes as soon as possible. Implementing temporary mitigations, such as disabling affected features, applying compensating controls, or enhancing monitoring would help reduce risk. Communication with stakeholders about the new vulnerabilities and the remediation plan is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Continuous monitoring and validation of the remediation efforts would ensure the effectiveness of the updates. 51. Scenario, a critical vulnerability in a widely used open source component is discovered. How do you respond? Answer, I would identify all systems and applications using the affected open source component and assess the impact of the vulnerability. Coordinating with the development and IT teams, I would apply patches or updates to the component as soon as possible. If immediate patching isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigations, such as access restrictions, network segmentation, and enhanced monitoring. Continuous monitoring for any signs of exploitation is necessary until a permanent fix is deployed. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and remediation efforts is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 52. Scenario. A new vulnerability is discovered in an application just before its scheduled release. How do you handle this? Answer. I would assess the severity and impact of the vulnerability on the application and its users. If the risk is high, I would consider delaying the release to address the vulnerability through patches or code fixes. Coordinating with the development team I would implement the necessary remediation measures. If delaying the release isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigations such as access restrictions or disabling affected features. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and the remediation plan is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Continuous monitoring post-release would ensure the application's security. 53. Scenario. A vulnerability in a third-party service integrated into your systems is disclosed. How do you respond? Answer. I would assess the impact of the vulnerability on our systems and data. Coordinating with the third-party service provider, 
I would apply available patches or recommended mitigations as soon as possible. Implementing additional security controls such as access restrictions. Network segmentation and enhanced monitoring would help protect our systems. Continuous communication with the service provider for updates and monitoring for any signs of exploitation is crucial. Additionally, reviewing and updating third-party integration security policies and practices would help maintain a secure posture. 54. Scenario. The organization decides to implement a new vulnerability management tool. How do you ensure a smooth transition? Answer. I would start by thoroughly evaluating the new tool to ensure it meets the organization's needs. Conducting a pilot test with a small subset of systems would help identify any issues and refine the implementation process. Developing a detailed transition plan including data migration, tool configuration, and integration with existing processes is essential. Providing training for the security team on the new tools, features, and usage would ensure a smooth adoption. Continuous monitoring and feedback during the transition period would help address any issues promptly and ensure the tool's effectiveness. 55. Scenario, an urgent vulnerability is discovered during a major holiday season. How do you handle the remediation process? Answer. I would assess the impact of the vulnerability and prioritize remediation based on its severity and potential impact. Coordinating with the IT and security teams, it develop a remediation plan that ensures minimal disruption to business operations. If immediate patching isn't feasible, it would implement temporary mitigations, such as access restrictions, network segmentation, and enhanced monitoring. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and the remediation plan is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Post-holiday, I would validate the remediation efforts and continue monitoring for any signs of exploitation. 56. Scenario. A vulnerability management audit reveals non-compliance with industry standards. How do you address this? Answer. I would conduct a thorough review of the audit findings to identify areas of non-compliance. Developing a remediation plan that includes updating policies, procedures, and security controls to meet industry standards is essential. Providing training for the security team and relevant stakeholders on the updated requirements would ensure adherence. Implementing regular audits and continuous monitoring would help maintain compliance. Communication with stakeholders about the audit findings and remediation efforts is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 57. Scenario. A major customer demands proof of effective vulnerability management practices. How do you provide this assurance? Answer. I would compile documentation that includes key metrics such as the number of vulnerabilities identified, categorized by severity, the average time to remediate vulnerabilities and compliance with patch management SLS. Providing evidence of regular vulnerability scans, remediation efforts, and the results of recent security assessments and penetration tests would help demonstrate our practices. Visual aids like charts and graphs can help convey this information clearly. An executive summary highlighting key findings risks and improvement initiatives would provide a comprehensive overview of our vulnerability management effectiveness communication with the customer to address their concerns and answer any questions is essential 58 scenario you identify a vulnerability in an application that is end of life eol and no longer supported how do you address this answer I would assess the risk and impact of the vulnerability on the organization. Implementing compensating controls such as network segmentation, strict access controls, and enhanced monitoring would help mitigate the risk. Planning for the application's replacement or upgrade to a supported version is essential for long-term security. Communication with stakeholders about the risks and mitigation measures is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 
Regular reviews and updates to the compensating controls would help maintain security until a permanent solution is implemented. 59. Scenario. The vulnerability management team is facing resistance from other departments. How do you foster collaboration? Answer. I would start by communicating the importance of vulnerability management and its impact on the organization's overall security posture. Providing data on the number of vulnerabilities identified, remediation efforts, and potential risks and impacts of not addressing vulnerabilities can help make a compelling case. Highlighting success stories and industry best practices can also demonstrate the value of the program. Regular updates and reports to all departments, along with clear communication of needs and benefits, would help gain their support and ensure the program's effectiveness. Encouraging collaboration through joint training sessions and cross-functional meetings can also foster a culture of security awareness. 60. Scenario. A vulnerability in a critical financial application is discovered during a peak business period. How do you manage the remediation process? Answer. I would assess the severity and impact of the vulnerability on the financial application and its users. If the risk is high, I would prioritize remediation and coordinate with the development and IT teams to apply patches or code fixes as soon as possible. If immediate remediation isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigations, such as access restrictions, network segmentation, and enhanced monitoring. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and the remediation plan is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Post-peak period, I would validate the remediation efforts and continue monitoring for any signs of exploitation. 61. Scenario, you receive conflicting vulnerability skin results from two different tools. How do you proceed? Answer, I would start by reviewing the configurations and scan parameters of both tools to ensure they are set up correctly and consistently. Analyzing the specific vulnerabilities reported by each tool and cross-referencing with known vulnerability databases can help determine their accuracy. Consulting with the tool vendors for clarification and guidance may also be necessary. Prioritizing remediation based on the criticality of the reported vulnerabilities and potential impact is essential. Continuous monitoring and reassessment using a standardized approach would help ensure accurate and reliable vulnerability management. 62. Scenario. The organization's vulnerability management metrics show a consistent backlog of critical vulnerabilities. How do you address this? Answer. I would conduct a root cause analysis to identify the reasons for the backlog. Implementing automation for routine tasks such as Vulnerability scanning, reporting, and patch management would help alleviate some of the workload. Prioritizing vulnerabilities based on their criticality and impact would ensure that the most significant threats are addressed first. Providing additional resources or temporary support to handle the backlog is crucial. Continuous training and process optimization would help improve efficiency and effectiveness in the long term. Communication with stakeholders about the backlog and remediation efforts is essential to ensure understanding and support. 63. Scenario. A vulnerability in a popular mobile application used by employees is discovered. How do you address this? Answer. I would assess the impact of the vulnerability on our employees and organization. Coordinating with the mobile application vendor, I would apply available patches or recommended fixes as soon as possible. If immediate patching isn't feasible, I would implement temporary mitigations such as restricting access to the vulnerable application or enhancing monitoring for signs of exploitation, providing guidance to employees on safe usage practices, and updating mobile security policies is essential. Continuous communication with the vendor for updates and monitoring for any signs of exploitation is crucial. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and remediation efforts is necessary to ensure understanding and support. 64. Scenario. 
an audit reveals that vulnerability management policies are outdated. How do you update and ensure compliance? Answer, I would start by conducting a thorough review of the current policies to identify outdated areas. Researching industry best practices and regulatory requirements would help inform the updates. Developing a comprehensive update plan, including stakeholder input and approval, is essential. Providing training for the security team and relevant stakeholders on the updated policies would ensure compliance. Implementing regular reviews and audits would help maintain the policy's relevance and effectiveness. Communication with stakeholders about the updates and the importance of compliance is crucial to ensure understanding and support. 65. Scenario, you identify a vulnerability in a newly acquired system during integration. How do you address this? Answer, I would assess the severity and impact of the vulnerability on the acquired system and our organization. Coordinating with the integration team, I would prioritize remediation through patches or code fixes. If immediate remediation isn't feasible, oh, I would implement temporary mitigations, such as access restrictions, network segmentation, and enhanced monitoring. Communication with stakeholders about the risk and the remediation plan is crucial to ensure understanding and support. Continuous monitoring and validation post-integration would ensure the system's security. Reviewing and updating the integration process to include comprehensive vulnerability assessments is essential to prevent similar issues in the future. 66. Scenario, the vulnerability management team is overwhelmed with false positives. How do you improve the accuracy of the scanning tools? Answer. I would start by reviewing the configurations and tuning the scanning tools to reduce false positives. Ensuring that the tools are up to date and aligned with the latest threat intelligence and vulnerability databases is essential. Implementing a process for validating and triaging scan results would help focus on genuine threats. Continuous collaboration with the tool vendors for improvements and updates is crucial. Providing training for the security team on recognizing and handling false positives would improve efficiency. Regular reviews and adjustments to the scanning process based on feedback and results would help maintain accuracy. The above 66 scenario-based question and answers cover a wide range of critical topics in vulnerability management for cybersecurity professionals. These questions and answers delve into practical responses to various vulnerabilities, from immediate threat assessment and mitigation to long-term strategic planning and stakeholder communication. They highlight the importance of a proactive, structured approach to identifying, assessing, prioritizing, and remediating vulnerabilities, emphasizing collaboration, continuous monitoring, and adherence to industry best practices and compliance requirements. Overall, they provide a comprehensive guide for effectively managing vulnerabilities in dynamic and complex organizational environments. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more, that will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.